Hey, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Noah the Hero here with your dueling stream. Tonight's video will be focusing on the reverse brainwash deck that Guns Blazing recently had on his stream. As he admitted, he got that from a YouTube or Twitch Asian streamer. So I just want to kind of walk through this and give you a little more in-depth understanding about what's going on in the deck. First off, the extra deck. These cards do not matter. However, there's no reason not to have your five options down here. It will give you an advantage, however small, if you're on the play or the draw, simply because your opponent might wonder, does he have some fusion cards? Does he have a fusion gate? Is he going to be using those? And that may then lead him to make different decisions and then better decisions for you. Uh, the all-star card in the deck that's not central is Manager Bug. This is like the cream of the crop monster for the deck as it is a card advantage neutral and potentially tempo positive play. If we could play more of these guys we would be. Unfortunately three is the max. Uh, Gale Lizard is a better version of Hain Hain and essentially a worse version though of Manager Bug. I only have one Gale Lizard. If I had a second that Hain Hain would not be in here. Unfortunately, I don't think it's good enough to warrant spending some money to get him. Uh, the Hyro Shadow Scouts in the deck are essentially the kill condition. They more or less ensure that you will not mill out before your opponent. The later you can play these and have them triggered, the better. You don't want your opponent to get any value off of it, if possible. The Crystal Seers are here to basically dig for whatever you need. Uh, generally speaking, first thing you're going to be looking for is to remove brainwashing. That is essentially the core to the deck. It lets you use reverse reuse properly, which lets you get two flip effect monsters to your opponent's side, and with reverse brainwashing, you get them back instantly, so you're basically getting a two for one on this card. Remove brainwashing also works very well with Mystic Box and the fact that you destroy your opponent's card, and then for a split second, you give them one of yours and you get it right back. Crystal Seer could look at getting, you know, a kill condition if you're potentially going to melt before them or something to answer a threatening monster your opponent has on board. So we're going to go ahead and start some live fights. I actually had tried doing a full five match video earlier before I realized I had no microphone hooked up, but I was just talking to myself essentially. Didn't realize that. So... Props to me for that delightful oops. Alright, so the first thing we see is that it's Pegasus, which means probably he's going to be using the Mind Scan ability, so that's something to be aware of. And looking at my opening hand of Double Manual Debug, Gale Lizard, Mystic Box is kind of the edge of maybe keepable. I'm going to err on the side of caution here because we do have Double Manual Debug and say it's good enough. Apparently, I'm not going to keep that because I'm not paying attention. Um, and actually, we've got a man your bug. We've got the Mystic Box, so that's the exact same. We've got a Shadow Scout, and we've got a Reverse Reuse. So really, all we are looking for at this point is that Remove Brainwashing to be in perfect position. The fact that we don't see Mind Scan as the starting ability for Pegasus makes me think, you know, if he specifically chose Pegasus for something, it's probably for Extra Extra or Creator. Both of which I'm not terribly afraid of. Uh, he's starting with Dark Paladin. So, he's really going to be kicking himself in a moment when this Mystic Bug comes and does its thing. He's got the ability to stop my first two spell cards that I play, so there's no way we're leading with Mystic Box here. Especially when his hand is just two dead Thunder Dragons. Gonna go ahead, lead with the man of your bug so that when he attacks into this, he is going to get a very, very rude awakening. Uh, we're gonna set reverse reuse here. There's not really a good or bad reason to do it right now. I'm essentially doing it simply to make him know that there's something he needs to be playing around. Maybe tunnel vision him into the idea of letting this stay around so that he can potentially counter whatever this is with his paladin, but. 
He's going to bash in. I'm going to get some very, very beautiful card advantage here. He's losing three cards to my one, so I'm feeling like a million bucks in this game already. The fact that we also know two of the cards in his hand are Thunder Dragons means he's working with functionally one card. There's discussion to be had about whether or not I should play the Shadow Scout. Like, if I play it now, I can basically start pressuring him and make him find an answer quicker. Given that I have a second Shadow Scout in hand, I think we're encouraged to be more aggressive about it. Even though I could easily see this being wrong. With Reverse Reuse here, we can potentially make him draw between 6 and 12 cards. Which could actually just end the game right away. So, I'm going to go ahead and say, kill me bro. What do you got? So he's losing the Fusion Gate, which is perfect. Wall of Disruption we don't care about. Wall of Disruption, as I said, we don't care about. So he functionally drew zero cards, but his three cards closer to being dead. We could activate Reverse Reuse here to flip the guys on my turn, but we have no reason to do that right now. Especially because I just realized we don't even have the Remove Brainwashing, so we have no reason to activate that reverse reuse. We're going to go ahead and set Crystal Seer so that ideally we can dig for remove brain washing if we need it. Otherwise, if we played that guy here, we could potentially be drawing him into pieces he needs and he could naturally draw for his turn a Fusion Gate or Polymerization and maybe get back in this by getting the Dragon Destroyer, I think. The guy that can like inflict piercing damage or essentially trample for those that play Magic. Uh, he set something face down, so I'm going to instantly assume it's those Wall of Disruptions, which means we know he's got two Thunder Dragons, a Wall of Disruption, so two Unknowns to work through. Uh, we've got Reverse Reuse already on field, so we're definitely going to take the Hain Hain, just because if he's, you know, using two cards and a Polymerization to make a Fusion Monster, that's another potential 3 for 1 for us, which is very, very good in any card game. Going to draw this, and it is a Gale Lizard, so functionally just a better version of Hain Hain, which means I am going to actually throw this down right now, and then give him the ability to attack into it, draw three cards that potentially do nothing, and then on the off chance he does have a Fusion Threat or something relevant, I've got my pick of ways to kill it between Gale Lizard, Hain Hain, and, depending, potentially, Mystic Box. So, definitely feeling pretty good about this, even giving him three cards right now. Let's see. He flips it, he draws Fusion Gate, which is going to be gone. Uh, the Hex, which we don't care about. Another Hex, which we don't care about. He can now play two threats, which, you know, not ideal. But he's only going to hit me for a thousand. So, we don't particularly care, especially because we could actually play that Gale Lizard face up and just not attack into the Wall of Disruption, but if he's discarded one Wall of Disruption, I'm wondering if he actually kept the other one in his hand, potentially? But, we don't know right now, so we're going to go ahead, we're going to play that Man Eater Bug face down, let him draw down to three cards, which means any Hero Shadow Scout that we play and activate is essentially lethal now. He's going to go ahead, flip up a polymerization, probably get, I would assume, the Dragon Destroyer guy here so that he can maybe start bashing in and damaging me. Yep. So, the exact name of the guy is Buster Blader the Dragon Destroyer Swordsman. So, I play no dragons in my deck, so he's going to be bashing in for 2,800 a crack. He should attack with that first to get me with that extra damage there. So we're going to be taking 2,200 here, unfortunately. And while I would like to kill him, as long as I don't play another monster, that can't actually damage me because he can't attack directly. So we are forced into killing one of the Hex-Sealed Fusions. We're going to take another 1,000 here, going to 800. And we are... Basically, in the hope to God to draw 
a remove brainwashing or we are kind of SOL. In hindsight, it might have been right to actually have flipped up reverse reuse and just fill up his board and we just had a hex in place so that he couldn't essentially... Uh, no, he still could he could have used the one in play. So, right now, we can... Okay, so there's Lon. We play the Krabby's card in our hand, which is actually at this point probably Crystal Seer. So we're going to normal summon the Crystal Seer so he doesn't get the flip effect when we Mystic Box, giving him or destroying the Hex, only to then suddenly realize that actually this line is not going to probably matter. Because we know that the opponent has um, the other hex. So what we're going to do now is activate reverse reuse and give him the smallest monster in my deck or in my graveyard. So I'm going to give him another one of these guys so that he can only bash in for 200. So we do have a potentially winning line right now. He can't get in more than 200 so it will take him four turns at this rate to kill me he's only got two cards left uh didn't consider the fact that he might have naturally drawn something like that to attack and kill me though so we are off to a astoundingly bad 0-1 start yet again man i am just not having any luck when it comes to streaming these battles I would normally blame my girlfriend for my bad luck, but she wasn't even watching last night, so... Maybe it's just OBS's bad juju for me. Alright, so that's an 0-1 start. I can pretty much only go up from here if we're looking for like a positive win percentage. So, you know, even if we lose again, we're still at 0%, which isn't any worse than 0%. So, you know... It's all about how you look at things. Um, so we're going up against Paradox Brothers, which instantly makes me think probably a three-star demotion deck. So that could mean something like a Neodotalus deck. It could be something like a three-star demotion ninjas deck. Uh, right here is a pretty solid opener. We've got the remove brainwashing, which is like the key card that we care about. We've got two Mystic Boxes, which are essentially removal spells in this position. And we've got a Shadow Scout, which, while not the ideal card to start with, does at least let us get moving. Hindsight, I probably should have actually not played Shadow Scout right here. Left it in hand so that I can kill the first creature. The problem with me not doing that is he could potentially just smash in and kill me. Which, given that he's three-star demoting into... Oh, a horse of the Black Flame Dragon? Well then, that's not ideal. And he's Mystic Boxing? Uh, huh. This is absolutely no bueno. No bueno, no bueno. So, on that note, we really, really, really... Want to find a man-eater bug? Gale Lizard or Hain Hain? I would kind of be willing to settle for it at this point, just drawing into Crystal Seer. Normally, any monster would be... <laughs> and that, ladies and gentlemen, is a wrap on my life. I can do nothing to stop this, so we are just going to get bent over and devoured by Horus the Black Flame Dragon level 6. Even if we had drawn the monster, Mystic Box would do nothing because Horus actually has an ability that prevents his control from being changed. So, he would get to keep that, and yeah, that is my life. Just getting devoured by a very angry dragon. Alright. So, as I said, can only go up. Alright. One thing that I will say for Duel Links, as much as I enjoy the ability to make different decks in this game, the fact that you can randomly just have the wrong opening and your opponent just has a better opening and just be dead on turn, you know, two or three 
is really disheartening, actually. And it's probably one of the biggest reasons why I could see people quitting this game. Thankfully, I love and enjoy a good challenge, and I enjoy the puzzle-making side of designing decks to kind of combat that. So, uh, we've got the remove brainwashing, we've got a manager debug, we've got a kill guy, and we've got a pseudo manager debug, so I'm definitely going to go ahead and keep that. Double check what my opponent's using. We don't know what skill it is, so it's probably going to be destiny draw, but if that is the case, that's pretty much ideal for us because we don't deal damage, so the only way he's triggering it is off of like a mausoleum of the emperor or a mirror wall. And he doesn't really have a way to gain life except for potentially the Aegis of Gaia or Supremacy Berries if he plays them. So realistically, he's going to get one perfect draw. Whereas, in a way, we had four with that potential for the restart. Um, he's actually playing Crystal Beast, which is something I don't know much about. So give me one moment here. Uh, if this card attacks an opponent's monster, it gains 400 attack during the damage step only. If this face-up card is destroyed while it is a monster... While it is in the monster card zone, you can place it in your spell and trap card zone as a continuous spell card instead of sending it to the graveyard. So he's going to go ahead and probably bash in here. Manor your bug is going to try to kill him and in turn actually turn it into a continuous spell card. Unless he... Nope, he's not going to fill up his back row. So, manor your bug. Do your thing. Hurrah! Om nom nom goes the man here, a bug on the tiger. And let's be serious. If a bug is eating a tiger, we got some serious problems in the world. Like, I need some serious, heavy, hardcore bug repellent if that thing is taking out a tiger. Alright, so we've got the Gale Lizard here. We've got two Shadow Scouts. Given that I don't really know what his deck is doing yet, I am not comfortable letting him draw cards because his deck could potentially just be monsters and traps, which means Hyrule getting flipped is a draw three until my opponent's got almost no cards left. So yeah, we are going to sit back and wait on playing Shadow Scout as long as possible. We could potentially just maybe not play a monster for a turn or two and get hit in the face depending kind of what monsters he's playing and what we draw here. My guess is my opponent's probably trying to figure out what we are up to just as we are trying to figure out what he is up to. We do know that he's not playing any type of a fusion spells in his deck because he doesn't have any up there. Plus side, though, he does not know if we have any since we've got monsters in our fusion area, our extra deck. So right now, we're just going to sit back and relax while we wait for him to make his move. Um, honestly, I didn't really follow the Jesse event at all, so outside of there being monsters known as Crystal Beast, I don't really know what his deck could potentially be doing. Um, so we're going to draw this, and it's another man bug. bug. We're just going to keep going with the same mindset of don't let him draw any extra cards at the moment. So we're going to play that face down. And we're just going to pass on back to him. The longer the game goes on with us just say draw go, the better my chances of winning actually are. My deck, if we could start, you know, 18 turns into the game. So we've got, you know, uh, actually, no, we'd both be, no, at 18 turns we each have had 9. So we'd have like 13 cards potentially in hand. That's pretty good for this deck. I mean, just a couple Shadow Scouts and the game's over. Um, so we're going to go ahead and now we're going to play the Shadow Scout. And basically, even if he does play a monster at this point, we're playing three-card Monty with him. And in that game, you always want to be the house. The house always wins three-card Monty. So we are just going to sit back here and watch him... Swing and probably miss for a couple turns while we just take advantage of the situation. Even if he plays a monster and... What in the world just happened here? Um, so, some type of an anteater. This card cannot be normal summoned or set. This card cannot be special summoned except by sending two spell or trap cards you control. To the graveyard, you can destroy a spell or trap card your opponent controls. You activate the fact that this card cannot attack during this turn. Huh. 
All right, so he's probably going to activate this. And he's going to kill Remove Brainwashing, which is definitely not ideal. I don't think I've ever actually seen this card played against me. For those of you who are wondering where this is from, it's actually one of the cards you can get with your SR tickets from PvP in the KC Cup. Uh, since he did activate the ability, he is not able to attack us right now, so once he passes his turn, which, you know, not really sure what he could be thinking about. Um, does that, yeah, it counts as a special summon, so he might have another monster in hand that he's thinking about throwing down. Um, let's see. You can send a face of continuous spell card you control to the grave to destroy a spell or trap your opponent controls. Alright, well, he's about to give us some serious card advantage. I mean, he used two spells and or traps to summon the Anteater, which then let him get one card. So he's down a 3 for 1 trade there. He then sacked a monster to that. And now he's playing that to prevent this from bouncing it. Yeah, this fight is definitely not going how he wants. This ability is not actually going to trigger, I think, because of the Forbidden Chalice. But that's A-OK -okay by me. Draw a card. Hit another Mystic Box. We're going to go ahead and set that. Uh, we're going to flip Manor Bug here to kill the Dragon. Simply because if we don't do it, he might attack... Yeah, he might play a creature and attack with both the creatures into these two, then drawing six cards and potentially playing himself back into this game. We do not want him doing that above all else. So we are going to try and prevent him from drawing as many cards as possible and actually incentivize him to attack into the manual debug so those two stay face down a little bit longer. He's going to soul exchange here, so he's not going to get a combat phase, which is pretty okay with me. He's going to get rid of that, probably for another Magna Slash Dragon thing. Uh, yeah, Magna Slash Dragon. Um, so, he doesn't get to attack because of the Soul Exchange. You're going to go ahead and actually leave that in attack mode. We will Mystic Box, trading our Man Eater Bug for the ability to kill his Magna Slash Dragon. If we had removed brainwashing here, this would be an insanely good play, but this is still <laughs> still not a bad play by any stretch. We will set the Hain Hain. Ideally, he won't have a monster to do anything with, so he might like attack into one of these. I can bounce the Mary Bug back to my hand potentially if he attacks Hain Hain. And then we have Mary Bug for the creature play for the my upcoming turn. Worst case, he attacks into the Shadow Scout. Shadow Scout survives. We flip Hain Hain, bounce Manor Your Blood back to hand, play it face down, and we're sitting pretty good in that position too. So, it's time just to sit back and watch what's going on. One way to kind of evaluate how you're doing in Duel Links, especially if you're playing this deck, is simply look at the number of cards that you have left in play and in your hand. Right now, like, yes, he's got this continuous spell here, but it's doing literally nothing. Um, what in the world does this Crystal Beast Amethyst Cat do? Uh, this card can attack your opponent directly, but when it uses this effect, any battle damage it inflicts to your opponent is halved. If this face-up card is destroyed, it's in the monster card zone. You can place into your spell and trap cards a continuous spell and start sending to the grave. So basically, you can clock me for a free 600 a turn. So I could kill that so that I don't die in nine turns, it looks like. Yeah, nine turns, basically. Uh, nine times six. Oh, no, 54. So in, like, five turns. Nine times five is 45. Screw it. This way I could get rid of it so I don't die in a few turns. Or I can bounce this back to my hand, which is the better play. Then on my turn, I can set that. And... The following turn, I can kill that as need be. Or, as I just realized, we can set that. We can consider trading this over to him, which isn't the worst option. 
But having Mystic Box and the potential for him to have like another Magnus Slash Dragon, because I think we've only taken care of two of them. Yeah, we've only taken care of two of them. So we're just going to kind of sit back here and be comfortable with taking another 600, because that puts us at 2,800. That's just another tag after that puts us at 22, then puts us at 16, then 1,000, then 400, then dead. So it'll take six attacks directly from this cat to actually kill me. So we've got some time. We can just sit back and trade resources. Mathematically, this cat would kill us before him naturally drawing out. But don't forget, the Shadow Scout will actually make him draw three cards. So we do actually win this. Especially having a Shadow Scout in hand, we can simply use Mystic Box, give that to him so we don't take damage, play Shadow Scout, and then have him draw essentially six cards. He's got nine left, so we want to wait about three turns so that he can't actually make use of the cards he is drawing from Shadow Scout. Alright, so what, oh, what could he be up to now? Um, okay, so he's got another cat. So he just doubled his clock here, so. Uh, he's going to be essentially hitting me for 1,200 a turn, which means we really need to start moving or we are going to die a lot quicker than anticipated. So, we're going to take another 600 here, putting us down to... 1600 so what are we going to draw for turn what oh what could it be we've got crystal seer uh crystal seer is basically going to do jack squat right now um so we're going to flip up man eater bug we are going to kill one crystal beast with it we are then going to mystic box potentially to give him the Mandarin Bug, since it can't actually even get through any of my creatures. Worst case scenario is he can sack the Mandarin Bug then for his third Magna Dragon. Um, sure, we now know what the face on is, which is a Beast Rising, so we can easily play around that. Let this resolve. Mystic Box giving him the Mandarin Bug, which is pretty good for us. Go ahead and have that broski. Uh, right now I'm kind of confused what was going on that there was a pause there. Like the only thing I could think would be like a sphere field in his hand, but that shouldn't do anything. So while it's usually good to pay attention when there's pauses in the game to know if your opponent can activate what's ever on the field or if it's combat if he has a sphere creel in hand, sometimes that does not work, so oh gosh. That Burning Land is not what we want to see right now. Uh, we can still win through this with what the board looks like at the moment, but it's not going to be as clean. So we're going to go ahead, set that. We're going to try and get him to focus on like getting rid of Reverse Reuse or something like that. Um, so we're just going to go ahead... Actually, I don't want to set the Mystic Box on the off chance that we need to kill something and he guesses a card and picks that one instead of getting rid of the Reverse Reuse. He's at six cards, which means he needs to kill me on this turn. And the only way he can do that is if he gets through a direct 600 right now. So as long as he does not hit me for 600, we are sitting pretty good. If he has another cat, I'm in trouble. So we are on the cross your fingers and hope plan. But short of him having that cat, I don't think we can actually lose from this position. So it's just time to sit back and wait and see what fate has in store for us. Man, that guy's got a lot of foils going on right now. The few times I played the Jesse event, I actually got, like, crap rewards from him. And when I looked at the cards, I didn't think there was anything I really wanted, just because 
with a three spell trap zone in dual links compared to the five in normal paper, I didn't think the crystal beasts would actually be very useful. So I didn't really farm him on like most of the random duelists I farm pretty hard. All right, so now to put things down for good, we take the 500 from his field or from his continuous spell card. We're going to flip this, make him draw three. What's he going to get here? I'm curious, actually, because I have no idea what's going on with his deck, really. And this might become a thing, potentially. Hey, there's the cat that we didn't want him to have. All right, so he's going to discard the Burning Land. He's going to keep a cat in a windstorm, which we don't care about. He's going to draw three. We're going to pass turn, and it's going to be over. So he's got Super Rush Headlong. Uh, another Crystal Beast Tiger, and a Mirror Wall. So, we are sitting good. We can showboat here, but there's literally no value to doing it. We've... So... Hey! We have won another one. So I think that brings us to 1 and 2. So, you know, we went up. We're at 33%. Definitely not a very good record, especially for me. I mean, professional card game players for, like, Yu-Gi-Oh!, Magic the Gathering, Pokemon, all of those, the best of the best only average approximately a 65% win rate. And that's, you know, when they've been testing decks, they've refined what they're doing, they know what to expect going into it. In a random event where, like, they've got no clue what's going on, their win rate is significantly lower I would probably say that a random player who's familiar with their one specific type of format, so in the instance of Magic the Gathering, Pro is very seldom play Legacy, but if you put a Legacy player against a professional Magic player, I would bet dollars to cents the Legacy player would actually win that matchup. So there's a lot to be said for knowing your deck well and what to play around. Um, he's got Field of Warriors, so he's probably an aggressive deck. Which means Mander Your Bug, Gale Lizard, Hain Hain, Mr. Box Rocker, you're going to be all very good. This is the one time where I'm not even going to consider trying to get the remove Brainwash. Hopefully, if he's as aggressive as I'm assuming, these cards will actually be enough to stall him out while we draw into remove Brainwashing and company. So, let's see what our opponent starts off with. He could be doing like that weird boxer deck that Shady Penguin was doing, which is like Boxer, Sergeant Electro, and then uh, DD Warrior, and like the finisher, if you will, is like some two tribute monster that when you go to combat, you can tribute a monster to let it attack an extra time. Uh, that card could potentially be very painful for us if he somehow got it out and got to attack. So. Fingers crossed that doesn't come up. Although at the rate this is going, I'll die of old age before I die from damage. Like, it's first turn, bro. You've got four cards. You don't know anything that I'm doing. You, you're probably assuming I'm using three star. Oh no. You probably figured out that I'm not using three star demotion because there was a bit of a pause as I debated what to do with my hand. Uh, so he's got Sergeant Electro, which is definitely. My least favorite monster when I'm playing this deck. Um, with that in mind, he's got three set cards also. I'm going to be a little risky right now. and actually lead with this just so I can kind of plan out the upcoming turns a little bit better knowing what cards he's got and what cards I'm going to get to work with. I will be killing the Sergeant Electro eventually. So it's arguable that I should play the Man of Your Bug here. And potentially just get card advantage instead of giving him an extra turn to hit another monster. Crystal Seer is going to replace itself essentially, so we're not getting card disadvantage. But if he gets a monster on the field, he's going to be hitting me for damage, which, you know, 1600 is worth at least a card actually. So it's not ideal to lead with Crystal Seer, but I think the risk reward says. Leading with Crystal Seer is better. Um, the fact that he's got this card in hand is not playing it definitely makes me think it's not a monster. 
And I also don't know what the hell is taking him so long. Because he should just be bashing in. If this was Magic, I'd say maybe he's looking online to try and get an idea of what deck I might be playing. But the Duel Links online community is not very good at like posting winning decks. You might be looking at like Duel Links A or Yugidex.com just to get an idea. But seeing a face on defense position monster does not give him nearly enough info to really be looking around online to see what I'm playing. Maybe he just has a really shitty internet connection. Or, you know, maybe he's fapping away to something else because I don't know what's going on. Oh, well, color me surprised. He actually does have a monster. Uh, let's stir the damage of this card. Attacks the face defense position monster. Destroy that monster. Alright, so we're going to take 2k here, which is definitely not ideal. Uh, Man of Your Bug is ideal, however, so... Right now, we're going to get bashed for 2k, go down to 2k. We are going to hope to draw, remove Brainwashing, that would be the ideal draw. Um, given that he's not attacking me yet, I'm definitely kind of leaning on the probably just a shitty internet connection thing, or he's multitasking. Uh, so, as I said, we want to get the Manor Bug down there to go om nom nom on some deliciousness. Pretty much no matter which one he attacks with first, we are actually going to kill the other monsters so that we don't take damage. Unfortunately, that probably means we're eating the ninja instead of the Sergeant Electro, but what can you do? Sometimes you just gotta make the worst lines. Hindsight, I just realized I should not have played that Mystic Box because it does literally nothing. But at least for now it does nothing. Uh, trying to think if there is a line that gets me out of this predicament. Okay, so we've got that, which means we really want to hit remove brainwashing so that we can definitely take advantage of what's going on right now. I think the best way to last that long is to probably go with Man Eater Bug here so that we don't die to him randomly having another one of these in hand. Or just an 1800 Beast Warrior Warrior. If he doesn't have a monster period we get to kill the Sergeant Electro anyway and that's basically means that we just put the Mystic box down there for nothing, but there was no harm, no foul in that scenario, so. Fingers crossed, no monster, which is exactly what happened, so. We are looking much, much better, ladies and germs. Gonna go ahead and let that bug go om nom 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 on that delicious, delicious Sergeant Electro. Alright, what do we got here? We got another manure bug which ain't too shabby. The fact that he probably can't get a monster and special summon a monster from the way this game is going means I want to try and close this out as quickly as I can so he doesn't just start hitting monster after monster. So we're going to go ahead and play that. Um, trying to think if there's... Yeah, there's merit to playing that now so that if he plays Sergeant Electro, he can only lock down one of them before potentially reverse reuse is up and running. So... Uh, kind of just on the opponent to see what he draws right now. If that Mystic Seer reveals or remove Brainwashing, I can't think of a situation where I'm not going to take it over wherever the other card is. But, let's see. Alright, so he's got another Sergeant Electro. He'll probably just lock down the Mystic Box again because psychology tends to show to me that they always go for the middle card. Personally, because I know that I almost never, he didn't even activate Sergeant Electro's ability. I'm guessing he thinks it's about to die, or he's an idiot. And in this game, who friggin' knows? As I've said before, players on here, some seem very good, others seem very bad. It doesn't really feel like there's an in-between quality for Duel Links players. You're either, like, very good or very bad. 
I mean, I get it. Everyone has, you know, their kind of on and off nights. But when you only get one game to prove if you're good or bad, you got to always be trying to at least bring your A game. Otherwise, people are just going to start giving opinions like dual length players aren't that good usually. All right. What are you up to, sir? What are those face downs? I'm assuming it's some combination of like mirror wall, windstorm, econ, super rush headlong, you know. Basically just a lot of combat quality manip or combat quality. Combat manipulation abilities, which essentially make them all actually dead against me, which is pretty, pretty handy. Um dun 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 we're gonna go ahead play that guy out. So now even if he does remember to activate his Sergeant Electro, it's not gonna matter because he is going to be gone. I guess he could hit another monster like he statistically should, and then that's not the case, but uh, we will see what happens. Alright, what do you got for me? What oh what do you got? Alright. Oh hey, he remembered to activate it this time. Two out of three is not bad, right? Actually for my record, two out of three is bad because that means I have two losses. But you know, you win some, you lose some. He is not attacking. Okay, so you can he's probably afraid of what that card could be. And now I'm just thinking to myself, really, deck? No remove brainwash? We've got three and eight cards, so at least we're just off of, you know, 75% to hit one. Or, no, just under 50% to hit one. Wow. Math is apparently hard for me sometimes. Um, all right, so... We can flip that up when need me. He probably doesn't have exile forces to get rid of this. Um, he's got 12 cards left in his deck, so we're actually milling out faster than he is. So that's something to be aware of. Should We've got plenty of kill stuff in the graveyard also. I think it's time that we just kind of start putting a little bit of pressure on his deck. So... We're going to play that so he's functionally at 9 cards. We play this Shadow Scout, putting him functionally at 6 cards. Uh, with Reverse Reuse, getting back 2 Shadow Scouts, we'll put him at 0 cards plus any draws. So, we're doing okay. At this point, it's really just a question of what's going on in his hand because I have no clue. Alright, so we've got Remove Brainwashing, which is pretty much exactly what the doctor ordered. Um, so we could flip here, kill this, bash for 450. That doesn't really do much for us. Um, yeah, I think we just kind of sit tight here. Pass the turn. Mathematically, we know that we are in a very good position. We don't really want to give him the ability to get in any damage. Since I have no clue how he might like suddenly get out something that's got, you know, 2,500 attack potential. Had I flipped the man rear bug and he did that, I would be dead. And there is no reason at this point to even risk dying. So, I am the type of player that will always play it safe. I would rather play out an extra couple turns on the assumption that my deck is better or that I am a better player and there's no reason to give them the chance to win off with something essentially lucky happening. Um, I'm going to go ahead and let that happen. If he suddenly goes like double Sergeant Electro and hits that one again, I'm going to be regretting that, but that's just the potential that we have to deal with. Uh, that doesn't happen. Judging by the fact that he played another monster and hasn't attacked, I'm fairly certain that his game plan right now is to actually just let me mill out. So I'm going to debate the merits of flipping this up and then starting to essentially go off here. 
really like the question in my head is essentially what are the odds of him having a second Sergeant Electro? Second Sergeant Electro kills me. Functionally, potentially. Um, I flip this, kill this, activate, remove brainwashing, activate that, trade that, get back my manager bug. Yeah, that's probably actually the best line to go with. It has the highest payoff going for me, so... I'm going to go ahead, we're going to flip this, kill this, unlock my back row again that Sergeant Electro so kindly put in jail. Probably like the Brig, actually, if he's a sergeant, he's locking stuff down. Brigs are not a place you want to be, FYI. I don't care what the movies make it look like. <laughs> the Brig are not a nice place. It's more like Alcatraz with uniforms for everyone that make everyone look ugly. Okay, so we got rid of Sergeant Electro. We don't like him having this down here, mainly because the potential for him to tribute someone a monster, which, since we have no clue what's going on, could be very bad for us. It might just be absolutely nothing, though, too, so we're going to play it safe and find out. Uh, White Ninja, flip target one defense position monster in the field, destroy that target. Oh, yeah, that doesn't even matter one freaking bit. Uh, we don't want to flip Shadow Scout just yet, so we are going to go ahead and end turn. Hindsight, I should have just attacked for the free 450. Realistically, though, it's not going to matter. I can't imagine a scenario where I actually kill him through damage. Hey, look, there's the Shadow Scout that I didn't want to see again. So he's going to bash into this. He's going to lock that down. I'm probably going to flip up a Shadow Scout, make him draw three Mystic Box to get rid of that, and then we will see where the dust settles. We may actually not flip up the Shadow Scout, he's still got nine cards in his library, which means he's going to get an extra three free cards, which could just be a bow. Oh, that's charming. Okay. So we definitely want to kill Sergeant Electro because he's going to get an extra 225, so he's going to be swinging for 2125, which means ouchies to my life total. So what we will do then is actually play, probably play Hain Hain face down. Functionally, him and Gale Lizard face down are more or less the same. Gale Lizard face down is technically slightly better because of the higher defense, but it does not functionally matter in, I'd say, 95% of the cases. 100% in the case of this matchup. If he's got a monster that's only bashing for, you know, 700, I shouldn't be losing anyway, so take that for what you will, ladies and germs. Alright, so he's going to 8 cards here, which means... We'd make him draw six, so we'd functionally have two cards left, so he has three turns to kill me. Alright, what do you got up your sleeve for me, Mr. Wheeler? You got another set card. Yay, they do nothing! Huzzah for doing nothing. Alright, draw card. Reverse reuse, which is totally useless right now. We are not going to be reusing them, because... He's going to draw down to 7, which means he functionally has one card left, which means he needs to get on killing me, or we win. So, I really wouldn't have expected this game to be as close as it actually has been. Kind of surprised that I'm so low on life, but when you don't find removed brainwashing for a while, that tends to be a problem. And honestly, that's true for really any, like, super synergy deck that's based around one card, making all the other ones work better. Ideally, we could find something that lets us tutor for, uh, remove brainwashing, maybe like a search for a continuous trap card, like Cat of Ill Omen might be better than Crystal Seer in this deck. The jury's definitely still out on that, though, so... If I do decide to keep testing with this deck after tonight, I will probably sub in Cat of Ill Omen. 
I think I only have one unlocked right now from Shizu, so I might have to grind her up a little bit to get the second one to make it worth actually to test. I mean, playing 1 in 20 is not that bad because you're looking at 5%. Having 2, though, at least puts you at 10%, which twice as much testing, essentially. Especially when you only really want it when you don't have a remove brainwashing, so it really is very good. Alright, the opponent's got six cards left in library. Uh, there's no way he can kill me and on my turn from this board position, so we're going to go ahead and make him draw three. We're going to make him draw three in a moment also from the other Shadow Scout. Yay, you Floodgate Trap Hole, but my ability still triggers, so get bent, Joey Wheeler. We don't care. Another White Ninja that does nothing. Another ninja that does nothing. Another ninja that does nothing. Huzzah for triple ninjas of nothingness. Alright. Draw three more do nothing cards because you can't kill me on my turn, Joey Wheeler. Nah, 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 nah. You can't defeat me. I mean, for God's sake, look. It's two heads versus one head. Unless his powers come from having hair like a Super Saiyan, he's got nothing. But, uh, the fact that nothing's happening right now makes me wonder if I'm not somehow wrong about this. Like, he's probably just got a floodgate trap hole, and he's just going to sit here and stall out because he's getting salty that he just lost to this deck. Oh, yeah, for those who are wondering why I'm humming, I just kind of do that when I get bored, and yes, yes it is. That is the Digimon theme song that I am humming. Hooray! I really don't get why people surrender when, like, lethal on board. Like, you might as well just let me kill you so you get whatever little bonus benefit you get, you know. Even be it just one thing. Like, seven keys is still seven keys. It's not a lot, but it's something. Alright, ladies and germs, that I believe was my fifth game with the deck. Let me double check what we've got going on here. Um, so, we started at around 1300, so 3, 4, 5. Alright, you know what, we're going to play one more game before I have to get off my butt and go do some work. So, we'll see if we can break this at 50-50. Though honestly, knowing me... If we're at 50-50, I'm probably going to try and break the tie. So, if we win, we're probably playing two more. If we lose, we're done for the night. Alright, so we've got Valen Crawler, which probably means Ancient Gears, which is, I'm thinking, a good matchup. I haven't actually tested it, though. So, we'll be sitting and finding out together. Yep. Alright, so we've got Ancient Gears. Uh... We've got double mana rebug, which is pretty good because ancient gears don't play that many creatures. It's like roughly 50% creatures, so we are going to go ahead and keep this because we've got the two crystal seers to also dig in. Alright, we're going to go ahead and play that face down to just dig down. Um, the reason I'm not playing mana rebug right off the bat is we potentially give him the ability to... Play the Gemini guy here, and then on his next turn, waste his summon on that. And then two for one him functionally off of the Mandry Bug, because he would have wasted a summon. So, ideally, that works out that way. I can't really think of a bad case scenario right off the bat, unless he goes and, like, someone's Ancient Gear Beast, which then makes Crystal Seer just as bad anywho. So, worst case, it's... Equal, good, bad, you know, it's half dozen, six the other. This way, those the potential for a higher payoff. All right. So he's got Sergeant Electro, which means he's probably not going to off it next turn for a Gear Beast, especially if we draw a card and set one. So, all right. Uh, seeing this, we're going to go ahead and we're going to take this because it's, Functionally half the combo, even though it's not the super relevant half. We're going to play that down, and then we're actually going to play the Crystal Seer. 
because we can almost guarantee that he's not going to sack Sergeant Electro for it. Although, you know, if we keep the Mystic Box in hand, we have a way to unlock that whenever we want to on my turn, so this is definitely just better than playing Man of Your Bug. We could get thoroughly punished for this if he just has uh, Ancient Gear Golem in hand, but you can't play for him having the best case scenario for himself and the worst case for you, otherwise you'll almost never win. You gotta basically play the odds here and say, yeah, you've got 14 cards, which means you've drawn 6, you play 2 of them, so maybe you've got one, statistically you don't, so... We're just going to play the odds here just like I would for like any other card game, including Blackjack. I've tried poker for what it's worth, guys, and I don't know if I just can't read people or if I just have the shittiest luck when it comes to... Uh-oh. Oh, okay, it's only an Ancient Gear Beast. Uh, not ideal, but that also means that Ancient Gear Golem is a fair bit away from us, so that's pretty nice. We're also only taking 1,600 here as opposed to him attacking that guy at me directly and cutting my life in half. So either he's a bad player or he has a third monster in hand. Um, you know, not ideal, but it is what it is. Ideally, we'll draw remove brainwashing here and we'll definitely be in business. We will see if we are that lucky, though. Remove brainwashing one time, dealer. Hey, we got it. All right, so all we got to do for this line is set that. We're going to set the om nom nom bug. We are going to oh so generously give it to him at the cost of his Sergeant Electro for a moment. I say for a moment because... That bug boy is going to come right back to daddy here in a moment. Unless he does rare metal morph. Cool. I don't know if rare metal morph is actually as good as people say or what. But it is definitely on the more annoying side of things. And I think that actually just got me killed unfortunately. Oh, we will see how he attacks. There's no reason for him to not attack with the Ancient Gear Beast first. Um, we are going to go ahead and flip this up on the off chance that something somehow works out right for us. Maybe there would have been merit to taking Ancient Gear Beast and killing it with the Mystic Box instead of the Man Eater Bug. Because then we force him to make the Ancient Gear Beast bigger, but then it's actually... No, that's worse, because then it's definitely lethal to attack. Because the 500 attack boost puts it at 2500 versus my 2400 life. And you can almost be assured that attacking me wouldn't kill me with that. And he could have killed the Man of Your Bug by attacking with the Sergeant Electro. So, um, I really don't get why Duel Links lets me quote-unquote choose to destroy something when it's not going to work like I feel like they should just shortcut the shit out of this and get rid of that but I don't know maybe there's a rules thing where you could kill stuff if you just target it even if the ability doesn't happen um you can play the man of your bug even if we flip and kill something though any creature in that deck has more than 300 attacks so we are just going to end this game like Victor Crumwood in the Goblet of Fire and Seppuku ourselves. Hoo Go get squashed, bug boy. You are my best bro, but you just weren't best enough with that Sergeant Electro to go and have lunch with them. Alright, well, ladies and germs, unfortunately, this was a not so good run for this series of videos either. Uh, we're going to do another set of videos, I think, tomorrow. And we're probably going to try and play something a little more, like, mainstream. Um, probably not Cyber Angels or Zombies, but if there's interest in that, I could build one of those. 
you know, if you guys want to let me know in the comments, that would be awesome. Also, if anyone knows what the hell the different colored deck boxes mean, like, I don't know if it's just random or what the hell is going on with it, but, like, for the color impaired here, I'm thinking this is, like, a bluish thing and, like, an orangish red, and then we got, like, a neon green, maybe, and then we got, like, a tan, like, is there any relevance to what color these boxes are? If you've got any ideas, let me know. I'd love to hear from you. Have a great night. Stay safe and happy belated Thanksgiving.